Let's work out on the remix. It's VGC, the video game podcast with me, Jordan Medler, Chris Scullion, and Pete Donaldson. This week, we're saying a fond farewell to the Wii U, and we're drinking some disgusting juice. But first, <laughs> how are we doing, folks? Pete, welcome back. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time, but I'm always floating around like, a, like yeah. an awful bat in your belfry. Um, but uh, yeah, good good to be back on. I'm, I'm, I'm not ready. You've been covering on... the football. I've, I've been You've covering, been covering the football. this horrible tournament. <laughs> oh, it was such a shit. Was it a shame? Or was it no, just, we were it shit. Just, it we were just, terrible. Yeah, it, was, it just wasn't yeah. very good, was it? And, and, and I think you've texted me a couple of times going, you're shit, but you're managing to get through, and that's not fair or right. And I, and I agree with you. I massively agree with you as an English. It's profoundly English the way that um, things have went for you. Like when I was watching England um, the other day, I was like, this feels exactly like watching like Beckham's England. Like it feels mm. precisely the same. Like you have the best players in the world. Why are you not playing properly? Like it's so <laughs> incredibly strange. But yes, yeah, Scotland were um, absolute toilet duck. Chris Scullion, how are you? Hello. I'm good. Um, it's a very, what well, a very momentous day mm-hmm. to be recording this, and I, I never thought it would ever happen. But the day is finally here. Um, of course, uh, referring to the death of the Wii oh. um, which which um, I'm sure we'll get on to, to later on. Apparently, the Tories are out as well. <laughs> oh, well, the blue Tories are out. <laughs> <laughs> hey. so, uh, thank you. Good. Um, That's good. I think we're probably going to rebrand this show into more of kind of like political humor. I, I kind of think of myself as the the Emily Maitlis of the video game uh, yeah. media. Scene. As, as I said before, John, it's, it's it's no fun when you're in when someone who isn't the Tories in power. It's just harder to do, isn't it? Really, I suppose. Yeah. James Cause... O'Brien has lost millions of pounds overnight. <laughs> He'll be absolutely gutted. We should rename the show. Have I got we use for you? Come on, now. hey. Very Can't get nice. that kind of yeah. satire anywhere. This is why we're banned from the global player because they were they were they were trying to get us because they're like hmm, we've already got political debate we've got Frankie Boyle and all that can we get that video game show too hot too, too hot, hot to handle too hot for global yeah yeah who too don't hot sell ad- for global. who who don't sell- we've acquired a couple of shows uh, from global because they weren't able to advertise um, in America I think or advertise mm. some shows in America and I sort of felt mm. like if you're gonna call yourself global. Uh, mm. a, company that, a company that was <laughs> that I used to work for. I, 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 you, you should really be doing stuff, you know, other than in Globally. the UK and Europe. I would suggest. Uh, not to be a total yeah. radio nerd, but are they still in the that building in Leicester Square? Is that not the old yeah, XFM building? It, it certainly is. Yeah, the old XFM yeah. building I used to work in. Yeah. God rest it. God rest um, it. You should honestly, I recommend any listener that's going on holiday this year to download VGC the video game podcast while they're in another region because the adverts you get are fantastic um (laughs) I've been on many a trip where I've texted Pete being like uh, just listening to the podcast to check out and I've been advertised like Swedish real estate I've been advertised uh like Japanese car well Japanese cars is very on brand but it's um, sometimes but sometimes they will just put Swedish adverts in the UK version and nobody knows how that's (laughs) happened nobody knows why (laughs) Yeah. I like it. I'll take it. Keeps, it. keeps people on their toes. Speaking of on their toes, we have a drink review. Um, oh. I mentioned to one Pete Donaldson that when I was in London recently, I couldn't find a particular beverage that he's been referring mm. to for some time. Mm. And and now we have it. It's called Bigger Juice. Bigger Juice. Um, it's a, it is a fruit punch. It's a proud export of the country of Jamaica, a country I have visited uh, back in the day. Lovely place. Um, mm. But it is... It's really impossible to um, convey how red this is. Um, people that <laughs> are watching very this red. might be Turn able the to rest see. Of your, I, I think the, uh, the the camera's trying to compensate for how red it is, <laughs> and it's turned the rest of your scene very red. This is a colour that doesn't exist in nature, but oh. um, it, mm. it has been chilling in my fridge for a week now, so I'm going to... Oh, wow. It's, it's, it's unusual we have a bottle and not a can. Mm. While you open it, speaking of Jamaica, can you name the Scottish international footballer whose dad is Jamaican? Oh. No. Roy Aitken. Oh. Yeah. Fuck, his dad is Jim Aitken. Interesting. Oh, fuck's sake. His dad Jim is Jim Aitken. Aitken. Oh, come on now. <laughs> oh, dear. That's, that's there we go. Oh. Satire, that's I believe they good. call it. Oh, my God. It took me a right. while. It took me a while <laughs> to be honest. The, the honest smell is incredible. That. Let's. It's it's the best pop around. That is so nice. It is that so is nice, so isn't it? so nice. So, drop a pro plus <laughs> in there, and you got a new energy drink then. <laughs> <sighs> he's, he's fully necking it for that, those yeah. in the audio only. Really that cool, tastes right? exactly like um, the kind of. Uh, <laughs> 
where we've, we've now been joined by a very special guest, the it's right honourable King of Mon- Monster, Monster Nitro. Monster Nitro. Um, Pete Donaldson has broken I open a box. Future, Jordan, and you are yeah. in charge of the Monster Energy Company. <laughs> and Thank your choices God. about the, 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 the fruit that you've stolen from the Amazon uh, mm. has decimated that particular part of uh, Brazil. So you need to apologise and you need to repent. <laughs> and you need to have a think about what you're doing. So. Absolutely will not. I will double down and become uh, king of the world, king of uh, the world that's sponsored by Monster Energy. Now, <laughs> you throw back these nitros, and I'm not a nitro. What is what is it about the nitro? It says it's like super dry on the can, well, but what does that actually it's convey? Gone back, apparently, it's gone it means back there's nothing the in it. Monster thing. It is super dry. It tastes. Mm. I think it tastes better than every other sugar-free uh, energy drink. And I'm just sorry that you've got me. Uh, hooked on this nonsense um I, I you know i will have to pay pay the piper eventually i'm sure but uh yeah, yeah well. it's, it's not it's not it's not ideal but i'm kind of every time... between zero sugar um monster energy ultra the white one uh, that mm-hmm. looks like it should have coconut in it but it doesn't um and the, and the new original <laughs> monster taste um monster energy zero sugar um nitro it's yeah mm. they've got nice uh, every tops, time nice you... green tops Every time you I reference know. Monster on another stack product, uh, I have a little smile. Well, that's my fault. I've, <laughs> that's I've really, your fault. It's like a virus. I've really pained this man. Um, <laughs> this bigger juice tastes exactly like um, if you go on an like an all inclusive holiday to the Caribbean, they will have like slushes, red slushes, and right. it's exactly this taste, mm. like to the letter. And I've thought this taste takes me back to when I was like twelve, going on holiday with my mum. Honestly, Jama- Jamaica is 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 that's where the good pop comes from. Second oh. only to Japan, uh, just because of the ubiquitous kind of choice you have uh, ev- uh, on every mm. um, corner. Um, but you but you're never sure whether they're going to hide some beans in it. Uh, mm. Japanese cuisine generally, there's always a bean hiding somewhere. See, I struggle a bit in Japan because as a as a teetotal man. Mm. Um, it's hard to tell, even in like Family Mart and, and places like that, it's hard to tell where the soft drinks end and the alcoholic drinks just start. absolutely bashing back strong zeros <laughs> by accident. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> just going, mm. there's, a, there's a kick I'm to this monster. The best time. It's, it's actually 12% alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. See, what are your both of your opinions on boba tea? Because I, I despise any drink that has like... Um, foreign in bodies it. in it. It's too, it's too much for me. Um, Pete, you feel feels like you were drinking boba in like two thousand and four. Like, yeah. what is the when I used to live in, the move? When I used to live in Soho, there was a bubble tea shop that was um, a couple of doors down, and uh, uh, the lady in there um, basically every time I walked in, she would just make in make my bubble tea, um, and then she described uh, me to another member of staff as a regular, and I never went in again uh, because yeah. I will not I will not be seen. <laughs> There's a man who has a, a regular bubble tea shop, but uh, yeah, because because like in in London you do see ones where they just add like cream cheese and oh. bits of like um like, I like the popping passion fruit like sort of blobs. Um, I wasn't a big fan of the tapioca, but uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm a bubble tea man. I, I I can't deny it. The bits for me just like you feel like you're drinking a uh, a cup of like cysts. That are just exploding <laughs> oh, in your good, mouth. Oh, good! The cup like, of cysts. Nice. It's absolutely yeah. vile, Chris. Bubble tea, yeah or nay? Is that something I've ever actually dabbled with? Does oh. it taste like tea? Because I don't like tea. It's a catch-all term. It's it like can taste like anything tea. at this yeah. point. So it's just not actually. It's not actually it's like, tea. That's why it's, it's like always tea. put me off it. Yeah. The only time I've ever drunk something with a foreign body in it, wink, mm. um, it was Super Nintendo World has like a toad uh, lemonade thing. Right. And it's like it's like fizzy. It's like you get the cup and it's like lemonade, but the straw has like a circumference of like a ten p coin. Mm. And you're like, well, that straw is far too big for a normal drink. What's going on? And you start drinking it, and as you drink it, you're also drinking like wee gummy sweeties. Oh, okay, it's, nice. Okay. It's, it's, it's delicious. Like, so I, Fuses. I, I, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that that I like, but I've never I've never uh, effed with the boba tea. Okay. As the kids. I'm going is... to send you some uh, some fancy Japanese um, swigs that uh, have like bits of uh, aloe vera and grip and stuff. Aloe vera. Oh, I, 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 there used to be. Uh, I think the Japan Center in London mm. used to sell. Was it called Pulpy C? Right. And it was like a, a pineapple drink mm. with bits of pineapple in the bottom mm. of it. And it's like really awkward to drink because you can only drink kind of half of it and then the, the liquid stops <laughs> and the pineapple starts and it starts hitting you, the can. If you're sort of drinking you're like, the can going, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> exactly. it's, it's a bad look. Exactly. I mean, you've got to respect it's yourself, haven't you, really? 
yeah. when I first started really heavily going out um to like pubs and clubs, there was it was during the revolution of like jelly shots. Like all these mm-hmm. like horrifically underpaid lassies walking about with trays of jelly shots asking mm-hmm. if you want to buy one for like seventy pound. And obviously you would partake now and again, depending on how wrecked you were. Mm-hmm. And it was impossible. You essentially had to like perform a, a an oral act on this mm. little plastic cup to get anything out of it because if you just go like that it's jelly it just mm. stops gotta get your so, tongue in gotta get that exactly. tongue in yeah. you try and do like a homer simpson like a but if you do that the entire plastic cup will lodge in the back of your throat and you will be dead <laughs> on the glasgow streets um so yeah it's, i just like liquid you know i am mm. pro liquid mm. um laura my partner complains that i drink too quickly and too aggressively um yesterday after <laughs> too aggressive yesterday after i got in from football i put down two liters of morrison's apple juice in literally about 90 seconds just like open the gullet and throw it down and that does damage to my insides let me tell you brother but it's, it's i can imagine it's so refreshing especially after you've played football pete what's your post football like what are you what are you taking on after you play football because i feel after i play football like i'm about to die yeah, no, I, I'm i very much, I have to have, like, if it's 11 aside, Red Bull and a Lucas Aid, yeah. um, that's that's my drink for the for the, for the the whole show, for my 20, my scant 20 minutes that I'm going to get at the end. <laughs> Load up on ca- caffeine, get there. Oh, you're the right back series. Eat right. Brilliant. Okay, right. Well, I'll sit here for a bit, shall I? I'll run the line, shall I? Um, And then, uh, but but sevens that I play quite a lot. Um, It's just water for me, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's, it's just mm. straight, straight up water. I can't, I can't be, I'm an older man than you, John. I got to look after myself. I can't be <clears> drinking <throat> two pints, two litres of apple juice <laughs> after See. from fives. I always I, I play uh, we play uh, eights which because it's on a massive pitch like it's way mm. bigger than sevens. And last night when I was playing, I got plopped at centre back because I was stinking the joint out at centre forward. So <laughs> um, I then proceeded to commit about five fouls in a row, really mm. heavy, heavy tackles. But mm. they were coming in full speed, and if you, it's a, they're a smaller person, so if they come in full speed to me, they just stop. There's no forward momentum mm. going past me, so I was getting clattered to bits. And I got back to Laura's, and I was like. I can't walk. I can't take the dog out. I can't do anything. And she was just like, "Why do you fucking? Why? Why do you play? You're such a you're such a burden after you play football." <laughs> um, I like going anyway. back to the house and giving like the, the war tales to my partner. Oh, you yeah. should have seen. Oh, crack me back. Oh. Have you ever played with Chris? Chris, have you ever played with Jordan? No, no, no. I, f- I favour my limbs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, 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 We're all the men. We've got to look after us all, John. Mate, yeah. a Scottish game, a uh, games industry five aside tournament would be fantastic. Oh, um, I'd like that. Come on. Would... Not, not, not the way it's not the way it's going on Twitter just now. Oh, I would snap I would snap <laughs> the legs of so many people for Brighton. That would be great fun. Um boys, I want you to disregard the runner because we've had so much um we you uh, correspondence. We're gonna mm. do that in the second half of the show and dedicate that to that. Let's start with okay, okay. UK man jailed for four months for carrying six inch master sword. Uh, Anthony Bray was arrested in Nuneaton, Warwickshire, after CCTV operators notified the police he was carrying something in his hand. And not what you'd hope. He was walking in the Nuneaton <laughs> town centre uh, with it held out in front of him. The miniature contains a six inch blade which can be unsheathed at the press of a button. The police arrested Bray, who appears to have a string of past offences uh, for legal reasons. That's as far as we'll go. Uh, oh no, we'll actually just say it apparently, including burglary, <laughs> ca- carrying a bladed <laughs> article, um, and uh, reuniting the Triforce. In the UK, it's illegal to carry most knives or any weapons in public without good reason. <laughs> with the main exception being folding pocket knives with blades no longer than three inches pete donaldson this is a mm. bit of you knife guy uh, just call me mr knife guy no <laughs> knife more mr guy. knife guy um i famously have a sword and mm-hmm. i love japan and my partner decided one christmas to buy me a sword um uh, she heard on a podcast, she'd only bought the sod uh, from China and um, about a week before it arrived, uh, she heard me on a podcast basically saying that I um, don't never want to be a man who likes Japan but owns a sod um and so yeah that that was the, n- not not the greatest christmas present from from her perspective uh but i do own a sod <laughs> and i actually because i was wearing a cupboard on this morning i sound like of such course. a wrong of course i sound like such a fucking wrong and um uh yeah i was wearing a come on this morning as i was you know tending to my my nothing my flock else of, my flock of dogs and um 
And I kept saying, and, went, and she said, oh, it's a kimono day. I was going, I'll get my sword out. And so I went in the cupboard and, and started <laughs> waving a, a samurai sword around. Um, and uh, yeah, just bad vibes all around, to be honest, guys. I'm, <laughs> I'm watching this. I'm watching this. Uh, there's a lawyer on uh, YouTube uh, called, he's not the lockpicking lawyer. He's a different lawyer who loves lockpicking. He's the sword uh, there's a guy, lawyer. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a guy who's like, um, he's, a, I think he's a black belt barrister, I think he calls himself on YouTube. Mm. Um, mm. He's very much. Uh, like kind of a, he he's in he's sort of looking after the the, the the pennies I think with the algorithm. He's spending a lot of time doing a lot of algorithmic stuff, in my opinion. Uh, doing mm. you know um, uh, Prince Harry uh, kind of libel stuff, um, and like talking about you know what might happen. Joey Barton and Jeremy Vine's uh, court case. He's kind of done a bit of like almost kind of not pro, but like like very sort of straightforward stuff about Nigel Farage. Uh, and now he's done, yeah, now he's done an interview with Yaxi Lennon and he seems to be taking Yaxi Lennon's um, point of view, uh, you know, uh, as, as the truth, mm. <laughs> which concerns me slightly, but Good. his other, his other line is basically about what knives you can carry and what knives you can't carry uh, on the streets. Mm. Um, and so a lot of it just seems to be if the knife pops out, you're not allowed to wave it around in the street. So yeah, that's yeah. so it's not so much it's not so much it's not so much Kavanaugh QC as Katana QC. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think he's yeah, yeah. he's he's a keen k- karate man. But um, yeah, I think if you're if a, if a, if you press a button and a bird comes out to something, um, it's a big no-no, isn't it, Chris? It's, it's not right. Yeah, this is that is 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 I love the 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 video game community that. So many people are depending on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> are they Everyone's actually? going, poor guy. There's other people going, poor guy, come on. It was clearly, he says, it, he claims his argument was it's a fidget toy. <laughs> and the police, like, it, sergeants come out and says, you can get fidget toys that don't have a six inch blade. <laughs> Um, and and the thing is, like, it's a six inch blade. It's six inches yeah. isn't long, as 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 I'm constantly telling my wife. <laughs> um, but it, it, and 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 it's like, it's it's. It, it, my argument has been on Twitter. See if it didn't have a wee Triforce on the end of it, would you still be defending him? Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. It, it, it seems to be because it looks like a Master Sword. People are going, "Oh, come on!" It's, it's still going to hurt somebody. I mean, it <laughs> if, just if sounds, you're breaking it, it in somebody's house and you hold it in, in front of somebody's face, it's going to intimidate them. It's, 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 it's half a foot long. He's just bought a knife from a pound shop that happens to be Master Sword related. I don't think he's a massive. Master Sword guy, it doesn't. He, I he's mean, always he's past, reading the Hyrule Historia. He knows the timelines he's, he's back and forth. His past, his past, he's never off the Zelda wiki. His past crimes do do suggest that he's he's more of a career criminal rather than a <laughs> career video games guy. I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't. I don't think he was on his way to the MCM Expo. <laughs> with it. I, 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 I don't know. There's some wrongins that go to the MCM comic. Oh, there definitely are. Just just not convicted yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just it's a weird one. It's like. And then they get the the guy the guy get done for breaking the law. The law is you can't have a blade longer than three inches mm. exposed, and he doubled it. So yeah, he's his, got no argument. His first that. convictions were in 1989. I mean, ter- like NES territory. <laughs> Then mm-hmm. throughout the night, he's regularly in court for thefts <laughs> and commercial burglaries. His next house burglary was not until 2001 and 2003. What happened in the canon at that point? What was getting released around there? I mean, I presume there would have been... What, a like Wind Waker time at that Wind Waker point? time, yeah. yeah. It just sounds, yeah, it just sounds like every time a Zelda game comes out, he's committing an atrocious crime. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if we had no masters, he's the type of guy I'd want on the podcast. Just to chat <laughs> yeah, about this. Like, exactly. Just so get, do, yeah. do the severity of your crime coincide with um, the quality of Zelda games? Like when Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom came out, it was quite quiet because he had a lot mm. to do. But now that we're mm. we're waiting for this new one coming out later, um, maybe maybe, I, maybe the fact that you can play as a, as the woman in the yeah. next one like kind of threw him off because of <laughs> yeah. woke. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Pete, just going back on swords. Um, after playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I looked into getting Sephiroth's sword. Uh, is, that Master the Mooney. Sword? is that the massive it is, sword? It is lead? seventy inches long. Jesus um, Christ! And there is a man who sell you uh, Masamuni in the UK for two hundred pounds. Um, but it comes with a massive disclaimer that it's like it is your responsibility to check local laws if you can receive this <laughs> item. There will be no <laughs> refunds. Um, I mean, presumably at that size, it's just a big block of metal i mean you can't sharpen it it's too heavy to swing what do you do if you with check it? with if you check with paisley branch to see what breadboard of a sword i feel like masamuni would be like because masamuni so long and thin you'd mm. be okay if you got the buster sword like which is like a like a hoose brick thickness like there's enough buster swords kicking about paisley i've been to comic cons 
but because this just looks like a samurai sword mm. um mm-hmm. yeah also i said this to laura and she's like you'd kill yourself you cut your own head off like you'd, you'd try and do one move with it and you would just behead yourself so yeah, um, but what a move what, exactly, a, move. what a way to go what a way to go as long as it was recorded I, yeah as long as it was recorded that i could use it for content and i'd actually not be too bothered about that um i'm i'm, I'm a big sense raw dildo sword guy <laughs> That's what I like. One Andy Robinson <laughs> had one of those. Um, but... yeah. yeah, it was in the office. It was get regularly put in people's faces while they were trying to work wow. in the office. Them were days. Yeah. <laughs> Don't think about that too much. Don't worry about it. Different times, different times. That's, I remember um, the first Ramble show that we ever did. Um, the show ended with um, a young lad... Um, I, I don't know why it was even part of the show, but there was a massive 60 quid mega penis um, on the on We were using it for some reason on the show. I can't remember. I think it might have been a prize, but um, it ended up stuck to a double-decker bus <laughs> flopping around. <laughs> and I was like, I'm glad, you know, be, be, the, be the change you want to be, I suppose, in the world. <laughs> the dildo bus. <laughs> Uh, nevertheless, he was sentenced to four months in prison and given <laughs> a, <laughs> what a change, what a change in tone. A victim surcharge of one hundred and fifty-four pounds. Uh, Sergeant Spellman, which he um, sounds like a, a wizard. Um, we take a zero tolerance policy to blade his articles in public, and Bray has fallen afoul of this. Um, that was from Sergeant Gannon of the Hyro Police. Um, he does yeah, have very, he, he basically says, like, you you know, it's possible not to walk down the street holding a blade out in front of you. With a bit more self-awareness, Bray could have avoided contact with us completely. I mean, it sounds very much like he's kind of on the side of Bray a little bit. He's, he's an arm around the shoulder yeah. kind of uh, Warwickshire Police Patrol Investigation yeah. Unit man. Um, yeah. It's like we wish we didn't have to arrest you because, because admittedly, it's a bit daft that you have you have uh, tied our hands here. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, he's, he's very much like 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 the school teacher saying like uh, to the, the school bully, "Look, I stick up for you in the staff room. <laughs> but you, like, come on, does, you, yeah. I know I know you're a good I know you're a good kid. You need to stop this." <laughs> Um, who's, yeah, he's who's... putting his arm, arm round him while uh, um, applying the handcuffs. What's it? Where, where does that victim surcharge go to? Nintendo, probably their IP like. Yeah, no, no, who's the victim who's there? The victim? It would be. It so sounds Nintendo, like a victimless crime. It would be so Nintendo to sue this guy. <laughs> 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 you, you've brought our good name into disrepute by getting arrested using one of our properties. Do you know what um... would be absolutely brutal as a kind of video game sword? More brutal than any other video game sword. You know those like. Um, those Minecraft kind of like pickaxes and swords oh, yeah. and stuff. Mm. Like the shaft is like all pixels. So mm-hmm. they've got so many little points up and down the shaft. I mean, if yeah. you made that out of metal and sharpened each point, oof, that would yeah. be insane. Or you just like attach razor blades to every single little, uh, do, every yeah. single flat surface of it. So even the person using it is just cutting their hands to bits. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. We could probably do that. Probably well, the do first that. VGC live show, we'll make one of those and sell it. Um, <laughs> the blade knife. We would. Oh, we are undoubtedly going to get banned from whatever venue decides to host us for the first live show because I will take it too far, and then Andy will get absolutely wrecked and probably knock out the barman. And it'll just be Chris will just be sitting there like, be sitting there totally teetotal going. Oh well, <laughs> <laughs> that was fun yeah. for a while. Uh, just writing a book, writing a book in yeah. the corner, selling no selling your books, going up to sell people, my books. Like, do, you want, do you want a signed copy? Of it? Good yeah, deal, yeah. Good if deal, we yeah. ever do a live show, I'm not going to have a wee stall with twenty books oh, in yeah. it. Oh, I'd love that. Little um, yeah. who's uh, who was who looked after Million Dollar Man? Um, him. Virgil, Virgil. 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 God rest him. God rest him. He DM'd me once. Um, because he was because he was trying to, I, I replied to something he said I replied to something he said once out of the blue because he tweeted a load of shite mm. and he, he tweeted he DM'd me once saying hey do you do video games I was like yeah because he must have looked at my profile I was like yeah he says I'm making a mobile game that's going to make me cash money do you do you want to cover it cash money. I, he said do you want to cover it I said I'll have a look at it <laughs> <laughs> it never emerged. Um, that was like a couple of years ago, so he never lived to see it. I don't think any of us will. That game, well, that game was Pokemon Go. <laughs> Not a lot of people know that. <laughs> um, Chris Scott, you know, I've got some great news for you. Finally. PlayStation Stars is back. <sighs> 
how have you good how have you existed in the apparent one month that it's been gone i, I barely knew it was gone yeah. I, I, I was when they first announced playstation stars i was like oh okay a cool wee achievements thing and then it became blatantly clear within seconds that it was their scrapped nft um, mm-hmm. plan when 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 they, when they were all the clearly planned nfts and then when everyone did backlash they said let's make these not nfts <laughs> And let's just make them totally pointless be mobile phone collectibles instead that don't do anything. Right. Yeah. I mean, at, at the, as you say, it's clearly a thing that they're like, we've put enough money into this where we should probably just put it out at this point. But yes, it is um, incredibly pointless. I thought, like you, it would be an extension of the trophy system, which could have been mm-hmm. maybe cool. Like, maybe it feels like you should have a PlayStation home style virtual museum to walk around and look mm, at all your exactly. PlayStation stars and be like, oh, yeah here's when i when i finished returnal or whatever but yeah it's currently on the it's on the playstation mobile app and it doesn't completely work like there's been a few times where i've been reviewing stuff and i've not got the corresponding star because they've just decided not to flip it on yet um but yes it's it was down uh and both people that noticed that are now uh thrilled that it's returning um chris do you think there's ever a way that they make this decent or is this just going to be a remember playstation stars no, it's done. Yeah, it's done. Um, I'm I'm stunned they brought it back. <laughs> like, mm. To be honest, I think when it went down, they would have just went right. Okay, let's just forget about that and move on. The people, the, the handful of people who care, will, will move on to something else eventually. But no, they've brought it back and they've continued to keep the life support on. I I, I just I don't get it. Like you you, you it, half the challenges are like play one of these games. And you go, all right, you play it for two seconds, it goes, well done. Here's your here's your thing. And then you look at it and go, thanks. And that, that's it. You can't do anything with it. You can't, right. like you say, there's no place to display them other than a crappy wee shelf thing. It's just like, it's it's totally pointless. Mm. Um, and yeah, I'm not a fan. Is there kind of it? it uh, Because I think um, the customer support uh, were um, weren't really that well informed about when it was coming back or or even why it was coming back, because they were Mm. a a couple of um, times they'd um, uh, advised people not to buy video games, (laughs) a couple of times (laughs) not to buy video games because you know you need your you know your last straw bot hat or whatever the fuck it was uh <laughs> language um yeah it was, it's it, it it's it's a weird one i don't think sony would have enjoyed that particular side of things no <laughs> it's just it's, it's an odd thing I, i'm not I, I, I didn't care about it when it was when it turned up and i'm gonna i don't i didn't miss it so and you like a collectible yeah. don't you chris if you're not gonna like i it, do I'm, I'm a sucker for an achievement mm-hmm. like I'll, if, a, if a game's got achievements or trophies or what have you i'll i'll i'll, I'll try my best to rinse them but um at least then I'm playing the game. There's mm. there's a feeling that I'm actually doing something worthwhile. This is just so arbitrary and and like totally pointless that you're literally being given weird bobblehead things for for turning a game on. Mm. So I'm not. I'm, that doesn't <laughs> appeal to me in the slightest. Yeah. It's just busy work. Um. Yeah. I think they are pretty garbage. But the there there is a good idea in it. It's just executed really really poorly. Um. Mm-hmm. But. Alas, uh, Chris, I know you don't like virtual collectibles, but you really like plastic collectibles. Uh, PlayStation have announced a load of new toys, uh, new action figures for Aloy Varl, who is a character from Horizon, for all the people that really knew that. Uh, Kratos, Atreus, and Jin Sakai. Jin, Kratos, Atreus, and Varl will all be 28.80, but Aloy will be 48 pounds. Um... I think that twenty eight eighty is the right price for these, but why is one of them forty eight pounds, Fiscalian? Because it's the only one people care about. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, maybe maybe Kratos. Yeah, as well, Kratos but... will kick a ball. Yeah, it's because Aloy is a deluxe one, mm-hmm. which yeah. comes with four so, uh, four faces. Yeah. Um, five, sorry, gonna, five even... swappable faces. Sorry, five. Thank you. five I, I forgot to count the one that she's swappable. actually wearing. <laughs> and, um, but, but it's like she can only have one face at a time. Mm-hmm. So who, who cares? Like you pick the one face you like, and you'll never use the other ones again. Pop, pop, it's not like one morning you go, you, on your hand. You, just pop all over. Just to make like a wee puppy show. Yeah. It's it's not like you wake up in the morning and look over at your Aloy fifty quid figure and say, "I think I'll change her face." That she's pensive today, <laughs> and then like the first thing you do in the day is change her coupon. It's, it's I, I I think I think twenty eight quid was a stretch. Um, but the, that's the price action figures these days. I went into HMV recently, um, which is still just about kicking the ball. 
and they were selling those. You remember like NECA, like movie figures? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I used to buy those re- <clears throat> religiously when I was at uni. This is like 2003, 2004. And they were like 11, 12 quid each. And they had like a Jason Voorhees one at HMV a couple of weeks ago. And it was like 40 quid. Yeah. I'm like, is that, is that just the price now? Is that is that just what People is expected? Pay, yeah. So maybe 48 quid is in line with what you would expect for something like this. But it didn't, it didn't look that great. Like the face, the face doesn't look that good. So I'm going to compare it to the action figure line I have the most experience with, which is the WWE figure line. They have a uh, from an, the 80s. Yeah, <laughs> they have an ultimate figure line which comes with. In this case, it's Asuka. It comes with her massive entrance cloak as like a soft good, and it comes with two extra heads and an extra set of hands for thirty pound. Like See, three right. heads is enough. Yeah. I don't need this, five faces when you've got three heads. I think this Georgie mm-hmm. Animal Steel was like probably five quid back in that, the day. Okay, and, he's got, that George, and he's got real fur on his on his hairy back. That George the Animal Steel mm-hmm. was from the Jack Specific WWE Classics collection ah. from like the two thousand, like early two thousands. So I also right. had that figure back in the day. That would have been a nine ninety nine figure, mm. um, right. inflation and all that. But look, I mean, he never had those muscles either, did he? I mean, yeah, I yeah. know they, they they're, they're terrible for that sort of behaviour. But... There was a wee sh- there was a wee shop in Glasgow called Scotsman's Models. I don't know if you're aware. Of it, Jordan. Um, down the, are, you, are you familiar with A One Books and Comics? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm um, a regular. So just down the road, maybe five or six doors down the road from A One, this would have been again early two thousands. There was another one called Scotsman's Models. Was that um, the one on the corner? It was just it was just at the corner, and they they pre they they, they clearly originally uh, dealt with like model trains and model cars and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Hence right. the name. And then when WWF Attitude Era was was getting big, he he started um, adding wrestling figures as well to try and get some extra traffic from everyone turning up at A1 all of a sudden because A1 Books and Comics was the place to buy your wrestling figures mm-hmm. um, in the early in the late nineties, early two thousands. So this guy started selling WCW figures, which A1 didn't have a lot of. Mm. Um, and my brother went one day and bought like a multi pack. It was a WCW versus NWO. And it was like Hogan and Nash and maybe Sting. I can't remember, but it was like a three pack with figures and he was buying it. And the guy is like a really weird old guy who was working behind it. And he was trying to kind of, you could tell he was trying to know his, his wrestling and kind of try and figure it out. He says, he's looking at the box like WCW and NWO. What's your favorite uh, WCW and NWO? And my brother's like, I don't know, probably NWO. And the guy looked at him and says, so why the hell do you mix and match? <laughs> he's like, he's like, I'm going to buy the hang. I'm going to buy the hang or not. All right, I'll, I'll, buy an, I'll buy an Intercity 125 then, all right? I won't, I won't, I won't <laughs> exactly get involved enough. in any of this foul jamboree. What have you got in, in terms of Hasbro, uh, like, toy buses? <laughs> that's, like, right. that's like someone uh, buying a, a Power Rangers figure and then buying a Rita Repulsa to, like, have a game against. And they're like, nice. why are you supporting the baddie? Why, <laughs> why are the goodies to join the baddies? <laughs> um, Pick a side, son. Th- is that now Static Games, the one in the corner? Because I couldn't tell you. It's been a long time since I've been That is my game. trading card shop. And the guy that works in there, Kenny, is a good pal of mine. He's a, mm. he, he's a man of the people. Um, although I think... I think the model shop might have been one uh, one closer to A1. I used right, to get right. my wrestling figures from A1 as well because back in the... When I was at uni, I would buy and sell, buy and sell uh, wrestling figures because it was quite hard to get them in the US because the distribution was terrible. But the UK mm-hmm. had amazing distribution. So I would go down on the day that the, the set would come out buy every single figure that was there, keep one <laughs> set of the figures for me and sell the rest of them at a massive markup. And it was, it was fantastic. I still have so many of those. All this crap from like two, early 2010s WWE. So I've got like Ted DiBiase Jr. figures and like all these people that are like, oh yeah, man, remember them? God, darker yeah. times, darker do you times. Tra- do you remember the trash talking stage? Oh yeah, the one that had the little thing for their feet. Yeah, they had a wee NF, NFC chip in it, and they they made they brought out a Titantron first, like a big entranceway. And when you would stand the wrestler on it, if it was one of ten different specific figures, when you stood it on the Titantron, it would say "Now entering the Titantron," <laughs> like like all <laughs> ring announcers say, and then it would, then it would play their their theme tune for like a weird kind of loop, ten second loop of their theme right. tune. And then they made the trash talking stage, which was basically a backstage arena. And again, if you stood the character on it, they would start saying like some lines mm. and like just like some voice lines. And some of them are really weird. Like they put the Steve Austin one down and it would say, 
same stone cold time, same stone cold channel. It would anything like that though annoys me that there are sounds in in the box already there, but I cannot unlock them until I get a particular NFC. No bloody card mm. I, I, I need a way to get all of the sounds out and they'll even there'll be ones that aren't even released yet inside the little box and i need yeah. to hear them that upsets me it upsets me terribly yeah. it's poor it's poor sometimes I when i think about the fact i've got bones it worries me <laughs> i'll, I'll yeah. never see them i'll never see them <laughs> but there's a way there's a way it's, it's, there's a way. it's, it's yeah, not yeah. safe i'll hang out I'll with that knife guy that's the guy, <laughs> <laughs> that's the guy. <laughs> Okay, when we come back, we've got some Wii U memories. See you in a minute. And we are back. Uh, Sad news this week as Nintendo announced it will no longer support Wii U repairs as they have ran out of parts. Chris Scullion, the end of a tragic but very important era in Nintendo's history considering where we are now. Yeah, I mean, I always had a soft spot for the Wii U. Um, I was still on Nintendo exclusive publications when it came out, so I was kind of covering it quite heavily. Um, it was always, I mean, I think everyone agrees that it was a, it was a, onto a loser from the start, just the way it was introduced to people. Um, we all remember the kind of really awkward E3 where, where they spent 20 minutes explaining the Luigi's Mansion game and <laughs> uh, that, that kind of weird Nintendo party game. Um, and it, which was fun, like oh, that that game was really fun. I can't was it Nintendo Land. Um, all the mini games in that were really fun, but they were an absolute swine to explain. Uh, whereas Wii Sports was a pretty obvious. Here is your, they hold up the Wii remote. That is your tennis racket, or that is your golf club, and it's pretty obvious. You could look at it in one second and know what it was. Mm. Whereas the Wii U was such a such an effort to explain. Firstly, that it's not the Wii because the name was awful. Um, and then how it even works with this asymmetrical multiplayer they kept pushing. Um, so what the, what it did was really cool. The, the, the stuff it was doing was really clever, but people just didn't take to it right away, and that it kind of died. That is dead on arrival, essentially. It was especially unfortunate for Nintendo because it coincided with a kind of race for power on like the serious end of the console market, where PS4 and Xbox One were all about. Oh, we're we're it's like PC gaming. We're moving into like really high quality stuff. Like we've done the first HD era. This is like the refined HD era. Whereas Nintendo were like, if you swing a golf club above the Wii U tablet, it will hit a ball and and in, in the game, and you can throw shuriken out out of this tablet. And um, oh, do you remember all these games that were big on the PS3 and Xbox C, uh, 360? Now they're on the Wii U as Batman Arkham City Armored Edition. What does that change? Well, the map is on the tablet. Mm-hmm. Hey, mm-hmm. like it had that problem that a lot of um, Nintendo consoles, the modern Nintendo s- systems, suffer from, where Nintendo came up with the best ideas of the hardware um, as a kind of day one tech demo, and then everyone went, "All right," and then just put a map on map. the screen. Oh, <laughs> just never did end with it. Inventory. So, like Nintendo. Nintendo Land did some amazing stuff with that with that touch screen, and then they brought out a WarioWare game, which which also did a game in Wario. It was called. It was like, was it Game in Wario? I think it was Game in Wario, and, and and it didn't have as much as a Wario where game usually did, but it had some really clever use of it as well. But then nobody else. It's the same like when the Switch came out, and they brought out One Two Switch, which in, in itself wasn't a very good game, but did stuff like the marble rolling mini game and all that kind of stuff, and they've never really done anything like that since. Um, much in the same way Astrobot is like the best use of, or Astro's Playroom is the best use of the dual sense. Um, these tech demos tend to get the best out of it and then developers go, nah, mm. yeah. <laughs> just leave it. Um, so yeah, it's a shame. It, 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 the, the tech was interesting, but I also get the feeling that people just wanted an HD Wii. Like, ever, the, the main problem people had with the Wii was this isn't powerful enough. Um, and it wasn't so we're not... any good third party stuff because exactly of because be, because of that lack of power and so mm-hmm. 360 and PS3 were getting really cool games if the Wii got a port it was an awful port um, but 9 times out of 10 it didn't so people just said we just want an HD Wii um, and they gave him this HD Wii but put like a really clunky a weird control system with it um, and it just they, they were too clever for their own good I think yeah um, I've, so 
uh, when it came out i thought it was like the lamest console in the world um I'll, I'll remind you i was like 17 at this point so it was like the exact opposite of what i wanted in a console i wanted mm. playstation 4 i wanted graphics i wanted like hardcore shit you know um yeah. i came to appreciate it more as i got older like i think the 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 tablet is like was very kind of novel um i actually think it's maybe nintendo's most comfortable controller is that tablet because it's so wide mm-hmm. like your hands don't get that horrible kind of cramping feeling yeah. um and the kind of as you say the nintendo stuff for it was really well done there was a few outside like i thought that game wonderful 101 used it really well and every subsequent yeah. port of that game has been worse because it doesn't have the kind of tablet functionality yeah. um but it was just a really a really awkward era for nintendo like we was a kind of once in a lifetime success for them not due to not in terms of sales because obviously switch is, is beat it but it's like it was a success despite the fact that it didn't appeal to core gamers whereas the switch yeah. is a success and core gamers love it so yeah it was a a weird stumble an incredibly short curtailed generation they got out of there so quickly to get onto switch yeah. um it was, it was so expensive as well for what it was it was like nearly was it 280 or something like i can't remember the exact price but it was, it was a lot more expensive than the Wii was when it, because I think the Wii was one eighty when it came out. Mm. Um, so it was too expensive for the casuals. I don't like the casuals hardcore term, but it fits for this. It was too too expensive for the casuals to say, "Oh, here's another Wii. I'll just buy this on a whim." Mm. And it was too weird and fiddly and just not straightforward enough for the hardcore who, like you say, just wanted the next Call of Duty, just wanted the next FIFA without any kind of faffing about with it. Um, so it was in this kind of weird middle place where it only really appealed to people who liked quirky things and that's not enough to sell like d- d- hundreds of millions of consoles it was also a, a gamble in the fact that um so many people who bought a wii were never going to buy another console again like they they thought of the wii as just like the same way they'd buy a board game and not think about it like they didn't yeah. suddenly become gamers and um, mm. pete see for for you for the wii u was there ever any interest like what was the what was the feeling around it back yeah, then because for I mean, me the wii u is the is the end of the big oxford street launches the like mm. um let's drag the daily mail down here with people in mario and luigi suits all that stuff yeah i mean i guess it, i mean back then i mean i my, my i was never a big console gamer anyway my, my first console was an xbox 360 so like it's mm. like i saw it for me it was never going to be something that I, I flirted with anyway but i think i played it for the first time about five years ago in a airbnb in san antonio um, <laughs> Texas. just a random couple of games of that zombie you uh, which i quite enjoyed you know I, I thought that they used the controller really well but it was mm. it i just physically it just looked too much like a wii with an extra little you know a little peripheral that, that it seemed to yeah. have added in um um, and it just didn't differentiate itself enough. And like you say, they, they, the third party um, providers, developers just didn't know what to do with it. And they just stuck a bloody great big inventory or a map down there. So, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was it was very impressive. Um, I think, uh, you know, it could it could it, it was much obviously much more powerful than, than the Wii. Um, and it helped um, bring in some excellent um, uh, emulation in the PC space. So everyone got to play <laughs> Zelda. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's weird because some of the stuff it did was quite ahead of its time, and it's, it's again it's an Xbox One situation, but maybe mm. not as extreme. Where um, like stuff like the asymmetrical multiplayer, you get a lot of asymmetrical multiplayer games these days. Mm. They just don't use that weird kind of setup. Like the, the 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 gamepad was basically a PlayStation Portal, like an, an early yeah. version of that. Because one of the big gimmicks was, oh, you can press a button and the TV goes onto your tablet instead, and you can play it on the bed. Well. Um, somebody else is watching the telly, so they they, they they had some good ideas. Um, it's just it didn't like the the, the screen was four eighty p. The range um, so wasn't great, it, if I remember rightly. The range well. wasn't brilliant yeah. at all. Yeah, like you couldn't really go from one room to the other with mm. it. Um, what was that going was through just, then? Was that some kind of that wasn't going through your router or anything? That was just uh, no. It was it was it was on. connecting straight. It was a it was a wireless straight from the the gamepad to the to the Wii U right. itself, um, which I think is why the resolution was only 480p mm. because it obviously wasn't pushing yeah a lot like of, especially if, RF yeah RF and if the, if the latency had to be that quick as well mm. to send a video signal it just wasn't great mm. um so the idea was sound i think it's just the and even the execution was okay it's just it was too much for 
people didn't want it. Mm. it. It was another, it was similar to the 3D and the 3DS, even though I'll always swear by that. It was a gimmick that most people didn't really care about. Um, and the 3DS succeeded because it continued to have a lot of good games that people could still play in 2D, whereas the Wii U didn't continue to have a lot of good games that keep, people could just play without the gamepad. It's like people were forced to use it. You literally um, cannot turn it on without the gamepad, which is now a problem because they never sold the gamepad separately. So mm. it, we're getting to a point where there will be no gamepads and no, like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a problem for down the line. Um, we asked the VGC Maniacs for their Wii U memories and King VGC Maniac Andy Robinson came back with genuine first party 10 out of 10 games, a back end that had actual personality and amazing music. Yes, that yeah, is... Yeah, music was good. That's a huge differentiator that we're always talking about for the next Nintendo system yeah. that the Wii U had. I mean, it's it's emblematic of it being so related to the Wii, but it had a Wii weirdness in it, which was great. Mm. And the- that was what that was one of my favorite things. And it may have been actually one of the blessings of it, not having a big user base, was that uh, the me verse, yeah, where, where where you basically every game had its own forum um built into the the console and you could go onto that game's me verse page and share your screenshots and do little drawings little sketches of your favorite characters in the games and chat to each other and it was surprisingly clean for the yeah. most part like oh, there was they very had, little they famously had an a crack team of moderators yeah. uh, it was that. moderated to hell and i think that's because if it had sold switch numbers it would have been a lot harder to stay on top of that but because mm. only three people were using it at any one time it was easy to stay on top of it and it was like it was like the the loveliest social media i've ever used because everyone was just so friendly and nice and cheerful and it was like a, a literal wee utopia um and it's just so that i really miss that because as much as i love the switch the switch is a very cold uh, ui yeah uh, with no themes no fancy it can, can be black or white come on now <laughs> sorry sorry two themes um <laughs> but um yeah that's the one thing i dislike about that and the lack of achievements is the two things i dislike about the switch is that it doesn't feel very nintendo way yeah. um but yeah it's hopefully the, the second one will the miiverse was else. a feat of uh moderating genius because if you're giving people a a, a drawing pad it's going to be cock city and they mm. somehow managed to stop uh, the residents of Cox City from from making land. Um, Pete, do you think like a a social media that's dedicated to a platform like that could work now, or is stuff so spread that it, like it would it, it would kind of it, it would be underpopulated, or it would just mm. be full of Nazis? Like how how would it go? I guess in it's a, something, in a for, something for celebrate streamers to message underage people uh, on, I suppose. True. Know, giving, them, giving them another opportunity to do that sort of thing. But um, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think people have got their places. I mean, look, if if Instagram can't start their own threads um, without people going, eh, it's not Twitter though, is it? Mm. Like people aren't going to deviate from what they're already doing. So yeah, it's uh, yeah. I, I I see that as a bit of a non-start personally. More feedback, Matthew Reynolds from um, a little website, Polygon, I believe, I'm not sure. Um, The Ultimate Virtual Console Machine, that is a good point. Um, Chris, Mm. as you're well aware from these articles you do, where it's like every Wii U game that's disappearing, the Virtual Console was banging. It was, I love the Virtual Console. I I must say I do prefer the setup now, Mm. um, with with the library kind of continually getting stuff added to it, but I also, I get why people like the Virtual Console, because you you were essentially quote unquote owning each game that turned up um so and you can still download them apparently even though the eShop's shut down now um so like as new game and there are quite a lot of games on it but i do prefer the modern setup now because it lets you the fact you're paying a set fee for switch online and you get the entire library i think it encourages people to experiment more with kind of weirder titles that there's no way they would have paid 3.99 for but they'll happily take a punt on because they're not Mm. paying any extra for it. So I think in terms of game discovery, the new setup is better, but in terms of buying, like, say, Earthbound or something that you know is going to be good, the Virtual Console was a better way of doing it. But, Mm. um, yeah, I'm happy with how it is just now, to be honest. Yeah, I I think it has got... At this point, it is much better. Obviously, it started off pretty, like, threadbare, and they still refuse to put fucking Pokemon games on it. But, alas... (laughs) um, 
this uh, is this feels like this feels like a long term thing though. Like when the Switch Two comes out, that's just going to carry over. Yeah, they can't keep... start again. They can't be like, no. here's Super Mario All Stars, and here's the first Metroid, and that'll do you. We'll see you Remember in... Kid Icarus? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, wait. wait. Mm. Um, what else we have? So this is a good point. Obviously, the Wii U did have quite a good first party library, right? and Nintendo seemed to have not acknowledged that by porting the lion's share of it to switch however there are stuff that cannot be ported because of the functionality stuff like nintendo land which had like that hide and seek game which i thought was great like Mm -hmm. stuff that nintendo stuff that will also be really hard to emulate in the future because you'll need to like emulate a virtual wii u pad like i'm not sure how that'll work but yeah it's, it's a shame that some of that stuff's locked to that forever and they can't really there's no realistic like reasonable way to sort that the other thing i love about nintendo land is it just did weird stuff for the sake of it like the, the f-zero mini game in nintendo land um every now and then would bring down a wee tiny screen next to your car that would hover next to your car and it just had your face on it because the camera was on the, the gamepad <laughs> just pointing at your face so you could just see your, you could just make weird faces like Rrr! while you were driving oh and, lovely like, uh, just for just for no reason whatsoever, which I always thought was quite funny. <laughs> Purely probably for the benefit of the people watching you play. Um they can see your face while you're playing the game. I thought it was quite funny. So Chris, is, is, were you working at the mags for the entirety of the Wii U era? No. I, oh well was it the No. I was at I just left Official Nintendo magazine before it came out and I was the only person on Nintendo Gamer um when it came out. So Nintendo Gamer, for those who don't know, was the successor to Superplay and N64 magazine and kind of that era of stuff. Uh, Nintendo Gamer was the last version of that. Um, And they moved me from official Nintendo magazine to Nintendo Gamer, uh, closed Nintendo Gamer magazine and kept the website running. And so I was the only person there on the website and that's when the Wii U came out. So I luckily through that got the wii u and kind of most of the launch games and did like a big article on all the launch games um and it was maybe a couple of months into that that they decided to shut down nintendo gamer um and put me on cvg instead so i i, I was the one to turn the lights out on like, one of my favorite <laughs> magazines oh, as a child so like um, which is pretty cheers where sam's just washing a glass and then pretty much i just I, I i i i waited on the very last day of nintendo gamer this isn't true but i'd like to think believe it is <laughs> I waited till everyone else had left the future offices and I slowly walked out and stood at the <laughs> stood at the light switch and looked back at the empty desk and like flashbacks of me sitting at the desk typing things <laughs> came up in my head. And I just looked, I looked, I went, goodbye guys. And then I switched the light off Aww. and then it, it said directed by Steven Spielberg. <laughs> the I had the Okajima joint. Um, and then I kind of slowly walked away and the, 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 the studio audience applauded one, yeah. fi- one final yeah. time. One of those um, really over the top applauses that has like a whoa! And like that. <laughs> exactly, that's, that's, that's the exact one. Um, but yeah, so so that was that was what I was doing at the time. So when, by the time the switch was announced, I was back in Scotland kind of working freelance. So the, um, yeah, the, the, I was CVG basically for the entirety of the Wii U run. Mm. So were you there for the long. change? For the, like this is a disaster when that started to, to happen how was how was that like because from a gamer's person from a from someone that was just consuming games media it seemed to happen mm. a hell of a fast mm. i think i think i was still at O&M when they announced it mm. um and that was tricky because as much as we we were uh, people don't realize an official nintendo magazine we were actually still quite independent the only real dealings we had with nintendo was them approving our news pages. Mm-hmm. Um, and purely in terms of accuracy, not saying you should cover this, you should cover that. Um, but at the same time, our job was to in- enthuse our readers and get them excited for what the next thing was. Um, so when the Wii U came out, it was quite easy to do that because it was doing some cool stuff, but you couldn't ignore the internet saying, what is this? Like, what, yeah. I, I don't understand. It was They were really bad at selling what it was to people. And because we spent longer on it, the magazine, I, th- I think, did a good job of selling what it was. But obviously only so many people bought the magazine. Online is where most people were like, I don't get this. And you, you couldn't sit them down and say, here is how 
here is what this is, here is what it does, because people, you know, the internet is like people just want the information within two seconds. And, and we and people presumably, didn't... and we assume that Nintendo have fixed that in their heads to to sell something, you know, well. Um, mm. But they've only really had one generation. It's quite a simple product, the old Switch, isn't it? So are they yeah. going to fall foul of this again in the Switch too? I really hope not. It, by all accounts, from what all the leaks are suggesting, it's just going to be a more powerful Switch, and right. it has to be that. They, they can say, oh, and by the way, it makes toast. No, 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 no. Mm. Just, just, whoa, just whoa, give whoa, it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on. Because it, it won't help. It'll, it'll just heat up the, the, the GPU. Yeah. Fair. It'll literally cook the, the GPU. Heat, yeah, use the heat um, to toast. So yeah, no, I, I, I really don't want them to do anything too drastic with it. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think the, I think the messaging for the next one will be kind of as simple as you're saying, where it's like, it's a more powerful version of the thing you already have. God help them if those gate, if their games are backwards compatible, that'll be like. And, and they need, they need to get the name right as well because that was one of the big. And they know this. It's like it's not like they, yeah. they've totally forgotten what happened with the Wii U. They they know they made an absolute arse of the Wii U, um, and they know they can't just call it um, Switch Pro or something daft like that, which implies that it's still the Switch. It needs to be Switch Two, yeah. Or at a push. See, people are saying Super Switch, but I don't like that either. Uh, that people just want too... Super Nintendo Switch yeah. because it would sound old. But yes, that but again, would also be a problem. Like yeah, that sounds that sounds too. Switch Pro. It sounds too much like an upgrade to the existing one, rather than a completely separate system. It needs to be Switch Two or something totally different. I don't. I, I, they need to keep the Switch name, I think. Yeah. Hmm. But make it clear enough that it's different from. The, uh, yeah. No, we'll see. Do you think that the press were somewhat to blame for the Wii U's reception? Kind of what people in the press wanted at that time when it was so kind of. Uh, HD 4K console focus. Like I see a lot of response. A lot of the responses were like, "Oh, Nintendo marketed it poorly, but the press never gave the main, like the the core gaming press never gave it a chance." Well, I remember being angry at this, and I think it's still the case. One of the big websites, uh, one of one of those big three lettered ones, um, oh, gave it VGC. <laughs> CVG uh, re- reviewed the Wii U before they turned the online stuff on, mm. and gave uh, it like six out of ten, and said. This is garbage, and it's like you put the, the Miiverse isn't even on yet. <laughs> the eShop isn't on yet. Like the, none of the online games, nothing's work. It's not online yet. Mm. Um, I think there was a lot of kind of need, not knee jerk, but a lot of people waiting to put the boot in, um, and that obviously didn't help. That's, that's, uh, I appreciate that's sounding a wee bit conspiracy theory. Um, so maybe not, but that was that was the perception no, I, I got I, I, was I that a lot that... of people weren't giving it a chance uh, yeah. from day one. And it's like it did some good stuff, but you had to go looking for it. And I think that's the problem is a lot of people weren't willing to go looking for it. So I um, have a real sickness where I like to watch old, like 12 hour live streams from the launch days of consoles. So Giant Bomb used to, the day a console would come out, stream all day, play all of the games, like mm. put the consoles through their paces. And by the end of the Wii U one, the sentiment is already. The Nintendo stuff's good, but all these third-party re-releases of like Mass Effect and all this stuff, mm. like, what is the point? Like, it's just yeah. The, but wasn't at the, the end th- of like the Wii's life cycle of people just releasing absolute dross, and it probably just yeah. The, the 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 because th- no no one bought third-party games on the Wii like uh, w- yeah. towards the end at the start. Yeah. Obviously, you have the cases of like Carnival games, which is like one of Rockstar's most successful games ever and stuff like that. But, um, but this is the thing as well. It's like it's like. It, Again, it's like you say, people were criticizing all the third party games on it, but that was kind of the norm for, for most console launches that mm. you would you would usually get ports of previous gen games because because by and large publishers and developers didn't have long enough to get a game out mm. um in term in, in time for day one, so they would inevitably port like previous gen games, give them a, a, a kind of a lick of polish and and, and put them on put them on the next system <clears throat> that's always been the case so it's, it's another kind of yes yeah, i'm biased because i'm i'm big on nintendo as i am with xbox and playstation but nintendo has been my career that was that was what I, my career was focused on so I'm, I, I appreciate i'm biased to an extent but i think because my job at the time was to find was to actively hunt for and find the benefits of the console and i then found them and reported on them i just got frustrated when others weren't digging as deep and it kind of unearthing the gems but at the same time they shouldn't have had to the, the gems should have been visible 
Um, and that's why it didn't sell as well, because you couldn't just look at it and say, oh, that's why I want that. Mm. If you have to do research and discover what the benefits are, then it's, it's kind of doomed to failure, I think. Mm. Well, the Wii U, we hardly knew ye. Um, I think I still have one kicking about. Um, Chris, favourite Wii U game? First party and then... then in fact, let, let's not limit it. Favourite Wii U game? Uh, Smash Brothers. Ah, that was a good, that was a good um, one. That was a good Smash Brothers. Um, and also Mario Kart, obviously. It's... Mm. That's the thing. The, the Wii U, when you in a hotel room in uh, Zombie, <laughs> Zombie, U. Zombie U was excellent. That did make <laughs> good. And then it. they re-released it just because they couldn't call it Zombie U. They just released it as Zombie, Zombie. on all the other consoles. Oh, <laughs> yeah, brilliant. But um, oh, it's going to get really nerdy. Then I can't be bothered. Zombie U was, a, was <laughs> Zombie U was a sequel to a game called Zombie, which is on like the Commodore sixty four in the early Ubisoft days. But right. that's by the by. Yeah. Um, the... Are, are you sure that's true? Or do you think it's just in your head? Thank you. Thanks, Cranberry's, yeah. Cranberry's reference. What a, what a, um, what a close one, one for the kids. But, but when you look at it, see when you see if you list go to Metacritic and list the best Wii U games, it had some absolute bangers. You think it had the best Mario Kart? It had a great Smash Brothers. It, it, basically, it had Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. Because it was designed for for the Wii U, arguably a better version of the Breath of the Wild, because the map was on the the tablet. Mm-hmm. Exactly, um, the good old tablet map. Um, <laughs> they had a brilliant new Super Mario Brothers game. Um, didn't have a three D Mario, which was disappointing. Yeah. It had the HD versions of Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, which the Switch still doesn't have. Um, it had the best version of Mario Maker. Uh, because using the stylus was a lot more kind of satisfying than, than kind of satisfying than jamming your finger on uh, the Switch's touchscreen, getting all fingerprinty. Are you not um, considering Super Mario 3D World as a 3D Mario? I totally forgot that existed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so it did have a Mr. 3D Mario. Nintendo. No, I'm, I'm, I'm in my head. 3D Mario is like three free Roman like. Yeah, Odyssey. it goes Galaxy Two Odyssey. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because um, yeah, 3D World is is that weird kind of? It's a 2D game. With an yeah, extra yeah. dimension, basically. Um, yeah, 3D World was excellent. And so I'm glad all these games are getting... Uh, the Splatoon started there. I'm glad all these games are getting a second chance on the Switch. And I bet Nintendo's delighted because it lets them keep doing their one game a month thing, which they've been doing since day one. They're, when they're running out of games, go quick, just fire out another Wii U game. What have we got left? Um, so I would imagine we'll see Star Fox Zero at some point. That's the only one left. <laughs> um so, I yeah, don't know. Uh, there's 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 a very prominent uh, couple of uh, remasters on there that are due to come to Switch. But <laughs> well, I know that's true enough. Um, but yeah, in terms of it, only had 180 odd games or something in total. I think of, of a a quality ratio in terms of all those games, it was actually quite high. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it just it just wasn't right. It was the wrong thing at the wrong time, and just was doomed to failure from the start. But they had a big pot of money to do it, do it. So, yeah, for, from exactly. Me, so, and it was uh, an important yeah. lesson as well. I think it will the Switch Two will benefit from the Wii U's failure mm. because Nintendo will remember what happened when they were on top of the world with the Wii and made a complete arse of it. So they'll be conscious that we can we can do this. We are we are we're not infallible. We can make mistakes here. So let's be careful this time around. Mm. So I think we'll benefit from it in the long run. My favorite Wii U game: Pokémon Tournament. <laughs> it was a really good game. Which they also released on the Switch. They did, and it's better on the Switch. Shockingly <laughs> enough. Okay, that's it for this week. Send any questions, comments, or concerns to podcast at v- videogameschronicle.com. It might work if you send it to VGC as well. Probably not. I don't know how email works. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Um, next week, we will have a big competition. And that's oh. as far as I can say right now. But it's big. It's, it's EA big. Um, it's not actually anything to do with EA before anyone gets too excited. Um, Pete, what are you up to for the rest of the day? I've, uh, I'm, I'm trying to secure the um, big competition for uh, next week's show. So uh, okay, I'm, uh, I'm talking to a man on Visit Marketplace. He's got 15 Wii U's uh, up for sale. So hopefully we can give some out. Um, Chris, what are you up to for the rest of the day? Uh, I will be sleeping uh, mm-hmm. when, when the day ends to, to catch up on some much needed kip after the old election coverage um and then i'll be prepping for we're going on a family holiday next week to oh, scarborough good. and then literally Mostly. the day we drive the day we drive back <laughs> i pack another bag and then i'm out to japan the next day so i'm going oh, to be absolutely shattered lovely, Chris. um so yeah i'm off for like the next few weeks but i'll try and 
find a way to make it on the podcast in some form or another, even if I have to pre-record stuff from the old Nippon, uh, but we'll figure something out. <laughs> Next week I will be in LA, actually. <laughs> I just looked at my calendar and realised that, so we will sort something out. We, 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 might get, we might have a podcast live from uh, a place in LA, let's say. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then the following the week I'm in Toronto, it's a, it's a, it's a, I'll go to the game spot offices and <laughs> knock seven shades of shit out of Tamir Hussein because he deserves it. Um, Good or Chris, it's just occurred to me that I have genuine editorial reason to use that picture of you holding a Wii U and it's honestly made my fucking weekend. I cannot tell you how <laughs> happy glad, that's made me. I'm glad for you. Holding the Wii U, little picture of Pete on the Wii U screen, come on. It's got, yeah. we're, we're in the Mountain Dew head, head yeah, helmet. Man. Yeah, the, the, drink helmet, count yeah. box face it's going to be <laughs> a wonderful wonderful bit of a thumbnailery uh, you, i'm gonna watch football tonight because there's there's two incredible matches on tonight um we're losing, I say that we're losing two incredible teams strikers. aren't we jordan yeah ah <sighs> anyone but england follows on twitter at jordan <laughs> medler at skull 1888 at pete Donaldson would like to thank the great Grant Kirk Hope for providing the VGC podcast theme song. Not that I'm sure he actually knows he's done that. But until next time, say goodbye, Pete. Goodbye. Say goodbye, Chris. Goodbye, Chris. We will see you later. <laughs>